out here today in Temecula talking to Stephen Amaya about how he has grown his team and his business by leveraging in-house media. Looking forward to covering a lot of great topics. Let's get started. So very excited to be sitting here downtown at the public house in downtown Temecula with Stephen Amaya, founder of the Amaya Group. They are the number 12 ranked team in Real Trends in California. And looking forward to just sitting down and having a great conversation about how you've built your team and how you leverage media with all of your clients and recruiting efforts um, and applying the human touch to, to expanding your business. Cheers. Enjoying a couple beers. Cheers. What are you drinking? So I've got the, what is it? The Mason Jar Strawberry Soaked Gin Blonde. And Steven's drinking the Hop Comet. Hold up. This is a hard one. So let me, this is a mouthful. <laughs> Hop Concept and Comet American Double IPA. Everything I do is super complicated. Yeah. So. yeah, we like to keep it simple on the show. <laughs> so uh, we'll put links to all that stuff on the page so you can check it out. But just really looking forward to getting getting down to the nitty gritty, having a great conversation about your story and kind of what you've done. So Super forward. excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Cheers. And uh, this is an honor. So we had a good conversation before about how you guys are leveraging media, but tell me specifically a little bit more about what you mean by the human touch. Okay, so the human touch has always, to me, felt like every real estate company is so corporate. They're just, you know, the, the big box companies of the world. It's about everyone. The human touch to me is you need to identify your market and see how you can relate to the people in your market. Um, so if you're in Beverly Hills, it's gonna be a different market, a different target person than somebody in my area, for example, okay. Riverside, Marina Valley. So you're not going to show up in a Lambo at a $300,000 listing appointment. Okay. So to me, it's finding the avatar of the right person that you want to market to, and then just focus everything around that. So when you're looking for this avatar, are you, are you doing that mainly for your Pro real estate buyers and seller prospects? Absolutely. Or is it to recruit agents or is it all the way around? So we focus heavily on the client. So we'll find an exact avatar and as a team we do this to figure out you know, who are we targeting. But I think in the process, organically, agents are, trying to, are wanting to join our team. Uh, but we're very picky about who we, pick, who we choose to be on our team. Okay. Tell me a little bit about a little bit more about the human touch, right? Like what, like what does that mean to you? How are you connecting with these people beyond the regular real estate transaction type of marketing? Um, so a lot of it, like once we're in a transaction, it's group text with the husband and wife and the myself and the TC. So it's a little more modern than just email. So that way it's not like, okay, I just spoke to this guy, but his wife doesn't know what's going on. So everybody's involved and they can respond when they want or just at least know what's in the loop. So when we're in the tra transaction, that's the personal touch. Before that, a lot of it has to do with our Instagram stories, especially, I mean, I'm not that big of a social media guy, but I have a marketing team within my company. So they're on Amaya Group Real Estate and they're seeing our Instagram stories or our Facebook posts or our YouTube channel. Uh, and that's really relatable. Real estate to me is boring. Like how many, how many just listed of a track home can you post on your social media? Like right. it's super boring. Right. People go on Facebook Live, oh, I'm at this track home open house. Like people are gonna tune out. And a very good observation because I think what you guys have done with media is really interesting because you're going way above and beyond what the, what the regular real estate professional is doing. Because like you were saying, right? No one cares about like one, two, three banana street that you've sold or this and that. What they care about is the things that are happening in their community, right? It, like, here's a pothole that we can all band together and raise money to fix, or here's the local restaurant and here's the local businesses, right? So, how are you guys? How are you guys leveraging media to connect with with people on a new level? Uh, a lot of it was targeted ads that's starting to change. Facebook just changed the rules, I think, yesterday. Okay. So we're trying to figure that out now. We're in the Inland Empire, so we go around interviewing local business owners and um, 
you know, people, oh, everybody wants to know about food. Everybody loves food. Right. Whether you're vegan or vegetarian or whatever. It's common ground for everybody. Exactly. So we try to bring the best of, of our cities to the, to the public. That's very been cool. a very big groundbreaker for us. And so tell me more, because I really want to kind of explore this concept a little bit. So you're, you have IE Foodies. We have IE is, Foodies. Okay, which is your YouTube channel. It's, it goes on all our social media. So all it's YouTube. Social. Uh, Facebook, Instagram. Okay, and tell uh, me, tell me more about like what what you're doing on that and how you're turning that into business. So we don't ask for business in any of these videos. We're just the local experts. So we know all the cool little new places to go to, best food in town. We also have IE Scene. So that's like all our farmers markets, um, art walks, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if the city puts anything on, they did like a Day of the Dead. We were there. Um, so. All, all the local, hyper-local community stuff, we're involved. So people know us as, okay, if we, if we wanna know what's going on, we tune into these guys. So the Day of the Dead Festival, right? Like you say you're there with your crew. What does that mean to you? Like so, what, what happens? So for us, we hired a booth or we, we bought a booth um, and it was just to give back to the community. We were doing giveaways, raffles, those types of things. Um, we had a face painter, so we did that, but we shot everything and I think the, the best part of the story was there was another booth where they were also doing face painting, but uh, they, they were trying to build or earn money for their art department. So we ended up in a, totally organic, met this lady. She was painting my face because our guy sucked and theirs was really good because it was their art department. So um, I just literally washed my face and sat there. I was like, this is way better. Honestly, it was just for the film. Um, as she's painting me, she's telling me her story and like she literally drops everything for these kids. So what we did was we, she interviewed her, told the whole story, um, and I ended up donating, how much was it, do you remember? Like a couple hundred bucks. A couple hundred bucks towards their, whatever they're trying to do. Very cool. And she said that made more than we did all day. So it was, it was just a great story and yeah. I always live, love giving back to the community. So you get a community event involved, right? Support a local business or cause or something like that. Correct. And then tell the story of it on video is that kind of the yeah i mean everything i do is like super random so it's i nothing's ever planned okay I mean, if you ask anybody that's ever worked with me like don't give me a script don't give me anything because it's not going to work out that way okay i'm just super random i have severe add and that's just the way we roll all right cool so before we get too far down the road of how you guys are using media to grow your business i want to know just kind of like how it started for you like where like, where did you get into the, I want to grow a team phase and like, tell me a little bit about the backstory. Okay, so the backstory is I got my real estate license right out of high school. It's like 18, 19 years old. Um, started working for a company and maybe sold three houses my first year. So for those of you who are just starting, that's totally normal. Just keep going. Um, and then I kind of got into like the flips and wholesaling. So I started flipping houses, wholesaling houses, and until the market took a shit, that's when I really was like, all right, so I've only done real estate my whole life. I guess I have to sell and deal with normal like consumers. So I mm -hmm. um, started working for a Coldwell Banker like in 07, uh, when the market was the worst. And um, within 12 months became top agent, just because I was super hungry, I'd lost everything. Um, so how did you do that? Um, this is a very unique situation, but uh, it was the REO market. I was working for Lance Martin, who was a big REO broker out in Myrna Valley. Uh, every weekend they would give out these bat phones. There was two cell phones with all the sign calls. I mean, they, he was literally getting like hundreds of REOs a year. So I started- So the phone rang all the time. All the time. And nobody at the company wanted these phones on the weekends. I'm like, this is a down market and you guys don't want to make yeah. money? I don't get it. So I would take those all day long. I take both. Yeah. So then I just started, I was kind of like his unofficial buyer's agent because I don't even know if that existed back then, but um, I just started doing a bunch of deals. I think I did like 35 deals my second year. Okay. So you went from three to 35. No, no, no. So I went from three from 19 years old when I looked okay. like I was 12, okay. door right. knocking, nobody right. trusted me. Okay. Um, to, I think I did like 12 deals my first year with Lance and then went up to like 30, I think. Okay. And then what transitioned next? What, what, what took you from solo agent to wanting to grow a team and, and do that whole thing? So through that process, it was like all my friends were either at the Chargers games or going to the club and I was doing open houses. So it was a lot of sacrifice. 
I knew what I wanted. I was farming every day. Um, and then it just blew up. Like, I think because nobody was putting in that much effort at that time, it just kind of blew up like within a year or two years. Um, then I was like, okay, well, I can't, I had, I hired an assistant, which I recommend everybody do if you're doing at least a deal a month, because that'll bring you up two to three deals a month, um, which is common sense. I'm pretty yeah. sure you talk about it in most of your videos. So I hired an assistant um, and did, doubled my volume. And then the assistant wanted to be my buyer's agent, which I didn't know I needed a buyer's agent. But she's like, we have so many leads coming in organically yeah. that we, we just, I need to take these on. So let's hire another assistant. And then it just kind of grew from there. And now like our culture is really what we thrive on. And we have agents just from our, literally from our stupid little Instagram stories with little gifts of somebody dancing and us doing who knows what, playing ping pong at our office. It's just the culture. People want it. People see it and want to come in. Right. You make it attractive. Yeah. And it's totally like by accident. We're just having fun. It's awesome. I love hearing stuff like that. Circling back to how you guys are using media, because one thing that I really appreciate about Steven and what you guys are doing is how you guys, you guys have an in-house media person, right? And, we and have that, two. that's rare in, in, in real estate. And we have that as well. And I think it's super important because real estate agents, they're out in the streets and they're out in the field all the time and they need to be community experts. So what better way to show that than creating videos of the places they're already going, the places they're meeting clients, which is our, which is the, the good restaurants, the coffee shops, the places people want to know about anyways. So talk to me a little bit more about how that came to life for you guys. So I knew video was coming. Um, I, just needed to I needed to figure out how we were going to get there. So I, I suck in front of the camera. This is very rare for me. I, like I have most of my team that gets behind the camera and they, they're the ones who do the interviews and they're the ones who are doing the market updates. Like I'll get in there once in a while, but I've already built the brand. So it's literally like I built this thing and I'm just giving it to them. Um, cause my company, if you, if you ever like dissect our company, you'll never see me. Like I even take my name out of it. It's just AG now. So, and if you look at our, any of our, like our whole team photos, I'm not in the middle. I'm all the way in the left. Mm. So I, 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 I hate being the center of attention. And what's, what's the strategy behind that? There is no strategy behind it. I just don't want it to be all about me because okay. every agent I know makes everything about them. And I, I just hate that shit. Okay. Um, so I'm the complete opposite. I want to be behind the scenes and, and as You're much more as I can. You're more of an operator. Ah, not an operator because I'm fucking crazy. So I'm a crazy artist um, and I hire my operations manager to be the operator. I just, they call me the seagull because I come in and I shit good ideas and I leave. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's good. I'm going to remember that. I might call you that one day. <laughs> one, one concept when people get started going down the road of, of making videos and using media is they're worried about being ca on camera and they're worried about their content sucking. I think that that's a big fear that people have. So can you speak to that a little bit and, and what your thoughts are on that? I mean, just do it, literally. Um, like I said, I rarely do it, but I built something for my team to, so that they have all the tools to do it. But if you're a solo agent and you're out there trying to do it on your own, get behind the camera, put yourself out there. I mean, most of the Google searches are on video now, especially if there's nobody else in your community doing it. You need to be on top. Like, there's just no other way. If you want to be a local expert, you have to do it. Okay, so tell me more about what videos you're shooting that are ranking, right? You mentioned that they're on Google. So what are those types of videos that are? So we're doing real doing estate well. tips, okay. which like I said, nobody really gives a shit about real estate. So those are probably on our lower ones. Our biggest ones are the community highlights and the high beauties. So, and I have Josh in the background. I don't know if you guys want to edit Yeah, that Josh, why don't you come on and tell your, tell a little bit more about uh, what we're talking about. Seriously? Yeah, come yeah. on over. <laughs> he loves his shit. So. All right. Well, we got the guy. He loves it. So let's talk to him. All right. You so want to speak into my puff? Uh, check. <laughs> Is this thing on? Okay. So um, our biggest things that we're doing right now are the community highlights and the IE foodies. Okay. So um, when we highlight local neighborhoods like Sunnymead Ranch and um, there's a few spots in Riverside and we do like what's awesome about Riverside, why move to Riverside, those kind of things, that's... Um, people are kind of naturally, organically looking for that kind of stuff, things mm -hmm. to do in their areas. So um, when we're doing our IE foodies and our IE scenes, 
um, they kind of come up organically and people just want to know what's going on and we have the coverage for that and then it's under our branding with the Maya group so that's what kind of brings that to light and then with our community highlights um, people want to know where they're going to move to or why they should move to a certain place so when we highlight these neighborhoods um, and show what's cool about them and um, just letting people know that they're out there in general people really um, connect with that yeah. Okay, so tell me about, uh, I have two questions. What type of videos are you shooting and how are you converting that to business? Okay, can I pull up a seat? Yeah, pull up a seat. <laughs> it's a taller seat. Um, Let me see if I can pull my puff out a little yeah. bit. Yeah, we're shooting quite a few types of videos because we want to hit on all fronts. So um, our general marketing strategy is we have a funnel and we have our top of mind like general brand down to like closing the sale. So um, we have videos that like Steven and the other people put out on their emails to clients that we're already working with. Okay. So we're kind of like walking them through the process of like what's going on um, when selling the home, the steps that they need to take to sell their home and get it sold. But then we have our general brand awareness videos which are like the IE scenes and IE foodies. And then everything in between is kind of like the community highlights. Um, we have client reviews and client reviews are really important to have on video because more often than not in our industry, the way you're gonna convince someone to work with you is seeing others who have worked with you and who trust you and know you. And I think the so client true. testimonial videos are better than, most people think reviews are fake anyway, no matter where you go, Zillow, even though it's almost impossible to do a fake Zillow review or a fake Yelp review, mm -hmm. if they see a video of your client, like especially if we just like candidly, like especially if you don't have a media company, if you just shoot a video with your client in front of the property and say, hey look, here's your keys, we just closed this escrow, how was the experience? Like that's how to do their like just simple like get people to watch your shit. Not hey, I'm at this three bedroom, two bath right. tile countertops. And nobody cares street. Yeah. Nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. So that was the biggest thing too, and that was one of his things was he wanted to have those video testimonials so that we can actually have the stories and tell the stories, bring that human element into it because they they went through the process already. Right. So that was like one of the biggest parts of the entire human element. And they're generally. excited at that time. Right. Like they want to tell the story. So let them do the work for you. I mean, you work for them for- So what's your process on getting people to do those testimonials for you guys? Just ask. Yeah, the, the biggest thing, so we set up email campaigns that have all the links. We're making it as easy as possible yeah. for them. So we, we use BombBomb with the video and it talks about video reviews and then there's a link to each Zillow, Yelp, and Google, which we think are the biggest places to get reviews. And um, and we leave the link there, so when they click it, it opens up right to where they can write the review. So it doesn't leave them to the website. It's not linking generally there. We're going directly to the point right where they're actually typing. We tell them to copy and paste, and we just ask, like you said. We just ask. If you did a good job, they're not gonna hesitate. Yeah. Some of them might be hes hesitating to go on camera, but if you're doing a good job, they'll leave you that review. Exactly. I mean, and, and we're highly focused on, on and, customer And not service. only that, I think the way you guys are doing it is, is really the critical piece, which is you're making it easier for them. Like, they're not going to, on their own, go to Yelp and go to Google and not. go to Zillow and leave you a review. But if you can send them an email, which takes them right to the page and makes it super easy, and I've even talked to other people who will provide bullet points of the transaction that they can mention in there or different keywords that so they want people to mention. Yelp has their algorithms. So we'll even share that with them. Like if you really, if, to help us out, like this is what you have to do to, for our review to even show. Yeah. Because our reviews are real. Like yeah. there's no faking it. Right. I mean, everyone in the real estate industry yeah. knows that. Yeah. Um, so we kind of try to coach them through it before they could do it because they'll fuck it up. And then we lost that review. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so another thing, no, it's true. It's totally true. We have that happen all the time. Um, so <laughs> with our, our video reviews though, the, the biggest thing is that we ha we tell the clients how easy and how simple it is. And we give them the time. We're like, it's going to be a 10 minute shoot. It's not going to take a lot of time. Um, you don't have to prepare any questions. There's no right or wrong answers. I think that's the biggest thing is saying there's no right or wrong answers. We just want to get your feedback. 
and um, kind of laying out the foundation before. And do they come to you guys? Yeah, they come to our office, but we've also had some people where like maybe they it's inconvenient for them. So we'll go to them. We've done we'll we've it. done one in a car before. It yeah. looked like the Kardashians. Like he was sitting in the back. It our, obviously wasn't as cool because we could totally see him. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So um, one of the recent reviews that we did, we wanted to get them grabbing the keys for the very first time yeah. in the review yeah. and then leave the testimony yeah. afterwards. So they were talking about how excited they were that they just closed this deal yeah. on the car way there. Um, and I was in there and that's why I looked. He was filming the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and then I think the agent had their iPhone there so we were kind of getting shot at uh, foot, footage of both. So they get there, we experience giving them the keys, they're opening the door and this is in the winter time. So one of our agents, Jeremy, shout out to Jeremy Medina, uh, said, guys, if you guys buy this house, I will jump in the pool in the freezing cold. So, and freezing cold for California is like 75 degrees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it was like, it was like 50 degrees outside. There happened to be like a cold. So we shot the whole thing. We, he ended up coming through with his promise, jumped in the pool. They had their dog, their dog jumped in the pool after him. Yeah. So if you guys want to see it, go to our YouTube channel. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Where can they find that? Um, that's a, a my group real estate on YouTube. Cool. For me, like just the generic stuff is boring. Like I want the bloopers. I want the everything yeah. like, right. I want those experiences, that, cause that's yeah. what people can relate to. The authenticity. Exactly. I think that's a critical point too, is, and that's why, the, yep. that's <laughs> why the media team is so important, is because it's catching those moments that aren't necessarily meant to be caught, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's those organic moments, those authentic moments. Maybe you're having a bad day and you're venting. Maybe you're having a great day and you're celebrating, right? It's those different moments that by having an in-house media team allows you to capture those moments. That, but I mean, the iPhone. Yeah, iPhone is everything. So even though he doesn't have one for some reason. All right, I got Galaxy. <laughs> Anything else you want to ask him? No, appreciate yeah. it, man. It's been awesome. Yeah, we're good. Nice to meet you. Yep, nice to meet you too. <laughs> How many real estate teams or companies have a media department? That's super rare. So um, I think I think what we need to speak out to are the people who don't have that. Because I think you have it. Yeah. We have it. But I don't know. Uh, Kyle Whistle has it. Like, I don't so know. So let's even. talk about that, right? Let's talk about what to do if you don't have that and how you can do similar things. Just got to grab my beer. Yeah, hey, get the beer. Grab me another one while you're at it. Um, how someone can do it because to be honest like like when we started we were pocket producing like the phone in my pocket was the critical element to every video we shot i shot it on the phone edited it on the free software on my computer exactly. like there's so much shit for free out there right now right like don't spend spend the least amount of money you can like i spend a ridiculous amount of money but i have a team right so if you're a solo agent and you're just trying to like get into the media aspect of it there's so much stuff out there canva is probably one of the best things you can yep. use um and just go out there and do the videos edit them on imovie or whatever android has yep um yeah. and canva and then also a smooth right the yeah smooth is a new called? one for, for uh, instagram so smooth just helps you record videos without it being shaky but i Makes really feel easier. like the future is all about instagram stories right now so like when I'm on Instagram, I don't even look, I don't even scroll down. I just scroll sideways to look at the story. Okay, so, so, so tell me about that because that's a little bit newer of a medium, right? Like tell me about how you guys are leveraging Instagram stories for business. I have a media company within the company, so it's a little different for me, but it's actually better if you don't because they're in the office all day. They're just catching the stuff that we're doing in the office or like something that we just brought out or you know, random stuff that they can only do from the office. People want to see the day in the life of a realtor. So if you're able to go out there and say, hey, I'm showing today or, or hey, you guys got to try this sandwich. Like you don't need a whole media company for that. You don't need a whole series for that. People want the local stuff and just tag that because people are going to see like what's been tagged there. Yep. And just like I said, even if you're having a great sandwich, just story that, story everything. And one thing that, um like I think everything else is gonna be dead. I think everything's sort of story. Like if you look at Snapchat now, like I saw I, my views used to be huge on Snapchat. Now it's like 10. I'm like, what the hell happened? So everybody's on Instagram story. Like yep. I, 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 I'm not saying get off Snapchat, but focus on Instagram story. So what, what sort of content are you posting on there that you're seeing that's winning? <laughs> this is gonna sound crazy, but just like the dumb little things like that sometimes aren't even real estate related. Um, and we're getting comments on that stuff, like somebody playing ping pong at the office or like open house with like some funny little gif. 
Like just little things like that, we're getting more views on that than anything else. Uh, the silly stuff is getting more attention than anything else. That's actually, that's funny because it's the same thing for us. We, one of the videos we shot, we were um, just kind of joking around with one of our office admins and uh, we like to joke around with her and she, you know, we will get like confetti shooters and shoot them in the office and all sorts of stuff. And one of the videos we got of her just running after us, like basically talking trash because we were messing with her, got like 60,000 views in a week. And exactly. it was like, it was like, whoa, like Cause that, nobody it, gives a shit about right. real estate. Exactly. And so I think it's really about showing your business without necessarily talking about the real estate. And you don't want to talk about yourself. Talk about the experiences, talk about the clients, like agents, I'll just say it. 90% of agents, even if they're closing 10 deals a year, they're cocky. Like they, everything's about them. And I, I don't see it that way. That way, I always say us or our company or I never say anything me or right, I. Right. It's always us. Yep. Um, but I have a team, so it's a little different. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Um, but I think to a certain extent, everybody's got a team, though, whether you're on the team yeah, or you're the you, head of the you team. You have your lender, you have your escrow right, rep. Like, exactly. No matter what, that's your team. team so, yeah, go out and interview your title rep. Like, what is title? Nobody knows what the fuck title is. Right. I don't even, I still to this day, don't even know what title is. <laughs> um, so, Go on, ask your escrow rep, like, what are the highlights of, like, what should you prepare for when you're opening escrow? Go to your lender and say, hey, what are the top three things you should not do before you buy a house? Right. Simple things like that. And just do a, that's a good Facebook, Instagram live. Not, hey, guys, I'm at this track home, like everyone else in the fucking real estate industry. And I, I, I think you just gave a really good tip there, right? Like, everybody is out there filming the houses, filming the house they just sold, the listing they just took, and Give this and shit. that. And like, I, th I I think there's a place for that, but I think it's a smaller percentage. Do a mailer of, for that, like right. that social proof. Right. Put that on Zillow. Right. Um, do some sort of social proof piece for that. Nobody gives a shit on social media about that. It's boring. Every, exactly. every agent you know is doing that. Yeah. People go on social media to be entertained, to have a good time, and not necessarily Speaking to of social media, hear about your yo, business. Grab this for the gram. We'll see what we got. We're storying hard as live we speak, action like, this as is how we, we speak. So give me something right now that's really crushing for you guys. The stories are really crushing it for us. Um, just the community highlight videos are huge. Like literally, any anything. Like it could be an art store, it could be. So tell me what, like, so, like, Translate that to business. Tell me how okay, that happened. Okay, so, so it's very Gary Vee. Like, never ask for the business. Give them a bunch of free shit, and the business will come. Not Crazy. real estate related. My biggest tip, my biggest meat and potatoes, is don't make it real estate related. So, on that note, are you suggesting, so it sounds like what I'm hearing you say is. Be different. Is be different. Don't necessarily make it about real estate, right? Don't make it about you. Don't make Don't it about make real it about estate. You. Make it about the client experience and what's going on in the community. I love that. What do you think the biggest challenge is for someone looking to get into that? Into like the whole media thing. Just don't overthink it. Just fucking do it. Yeah. That's 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 one thing that we say all the time as well as is you don't need to be Gary Vee, you just need to be you but and just you do what I do. Like, you don't even have to be on the camera. Like I'm so much like it's not about me. They're like, here, you go out, you interview this guy, put it on my shit, and we got a bunch of viewers because it's not about AG or it's not about right. Stephen Amaya. It's about what's going on it's right now. It's about the community. It's about the community. So make it about the community. Add the human touch. Make yourself likable, approachable. That gives you trust credibility, all of those different things. To kind of wrap it up, let me ask you, what's one thing that you wish you knew when you started? Wow, that's a good one. Having people around you that are super successful, uh, people that you want to emulate, if you need to drop friends, drop them all. Like if they're holding you back, or even family. If family's holding you back from doing what you really want to do, you if you have a goal, it's, I mean, literally, if I can do it, anybody can do it. I have really bad ADD, I drink a lot of beer, but I love who I work with, I love my mentors, um, and I just, I don't know, I know what I wanted, I knew I had to do it differently. Be yourself a thousand percent, 
And that's, that's the best advice I have. I think that's a great piece of advice. I think the authenticity is very important. And I think that's one thing that you guys are doing really well that's helping you win. Um, so props on that. Uh, is there anything you want to plug before we wrap it up? For sure. Um, so follow, what are we, my group or AG or what are we? I don't even know what we are anymore. So uh, my group, group on Instagram for sure, if you guys want to see our stories, because there's something every day. Okay. Um, our IE foodies, IE scene on YouTube or and our Facebook. Is it AG yet or is it still my group? It's uh, AG. So Facebook, I hate that it's so many things. So yeah. follow my group on Instagram, AG on Facebook, and then it'll lead you to our YouTube page. So check him out. Um, he's a great guy to study. He's doing really big things, very successful, has a team that's growing and leaps and bounds, right? Like you guys are really making some moves out here and it's very awesome watching your guys' journey and the way that you guys are leveraging media is really cool. And I think that it's something that everybody out there can study and learn from. So I encourage you guys to follow Steven and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Now you're in the know. Cheers. Cheers.